and welcome to part 23 of object-oriented programming using Python and now we're going to unlock the mysteries of PWM now some of you have heard of PWM maybe you don't know exactly what it is you're going to learn a lot about it PWM is pulse width modulation it's a really super sexy topic whenever you want to go out on a first date and you never want to see the woman again this is a word that people toss around without really knowing what it is, but technically it's a method of controlling an average power delivered by an electrical signal by switching the supply between 0 and 100% at a rate faster than it takes the load to change significantly. More at the link you see there. So you have to understand what is significant, what is meant by switching the supply, and how does this work. A very common use of PWM is anti-lock brake systems. Another very common use is your cooling fan on your computer. It goes from 0 to 100 percent, so it runs only as much as necessary. That way you don't have this excess noise and you're not freezing the computer. So, in the ideal situation, the output signal instantly changes from 0 to 100% at some point A, then it changes from 100 to 0% at some point B, and then it repeats again at a point C. So, those three little arrows there, that's A, B, and C, okay? You'll see <coughs> that depending on how much time it's on, the average amount of power delivered to the load is going to change. The period is the time for the entire cycle, so the distance between the leftmost arrow and the rightmost arrow. Now, unlike the electromagnetic spectrum, period in PWM world is measured in seconds, it's not measured in wavelength and meters or nanometers or anything like that. Frequency is normally designated as 1 over the period or 1 over lambda and frequency is in hertz so one you know so many so many per second. Duty cycle is always a percent and it is the percent of total time during the period that the signal is on and that duty cycle is always a number from 0 to 100 percent. So what is the correct frequency to operate your PWM? Well, there is no correct frequency. It depends on what the system is trying to control. Normally, there's a reasonable range. In the ideal situation, the controlled system works just as smoothly at any duty cycle from 0 to 100% as it does without using modulation at all. So selection of a PWM frequency is less complicated when dealing with simple loads like a resistive load like say a heating element but it's much more complicated when dealing with inductive loads or loads that have momentum like say a ceiling fan. The selection of a PWM frequency also depends on the speed of your microprocessor because let's suppose that you need the frequency to switch I don't know 10 million times per second well you better have a heck of a microprocessor to do that and it also depends on the AC frequency of the power line. And here in the United States, it is 60 hertz. So you cannot possibly change it more often than 60 hertz in the USA if you're dealing with AC. So how does a tiny microprocessor that I have maybe on a little Arduino chip or in a Raspberry Pi, how does that how can that possibly control a large AC load, <coughs> like say a ceiling fan, or if this was a car, how does it how does it modify the speed of my electric motor, of my, I don't know, my heater or my air conditioning when we're talking about little teeny tiny microprocessors? So we often use a mechanical relay or an SCR relay. Now, mechanical relays cannot operate at high frequencies. You will see this most often used in air conditioning systems that only have the on-off type of control. They can't switch more often than every few seconds and 
they usually have a mean time between failures of something about 100,000 cycles. SCR relays, like the ones pictured here, are often cheaper, and a very small signal, like that of a microprocessor, can control a very large load. These can switch hundreds of times per second, but of course they are limited by the AC line frequency, and they can only be used for AC. There's another kind of relay. It's called a solid state relay. Again, small signal controls a very large load. They're also relatively inexpensive. They can switch hundreds of times per second, but these will work on DC. So this is, for example, how your battery power drill works or how your electric toothbrush works. So how do we deal with the outside world? Well, today's devices are full of computer chips, not just your car, your refrigerator, your microwave, your bread maker, your air conditioner, your furnace, your smartphone, even inside your washer and dryer, your dishwasher, all of these things have computer chips. So how does a tiny computer chip operate the dryer, your clothes dryer, or your dishwasher? Well, we go back to PID controllers. They can precisely control the load. Power has to be adjusted between 0 to 100%, let's say, for example, to keep your dishwasher temperature at the correct temperature in small increments. And how do we do that? Most often, we use PWM. The control frequency can vary from half a hertz or slower to thousands of hertz. Again, it depends on the thing you're trying to control. In an audio amplifier, you might be at 100,000 hertz for your PWM, but your space heater, your ostrich egg incubator, your dishwasher, it might use quarter of a, you know, one fourth of a hertz or even slower. <laughs> Which brings us to the next topic. Should we use hardware or software control? Well, microcontrollers, little things like Arduinos and whatnot, they often have hardware PWM built in. It's one of the chips. And you can access it with the internal programming interface. Now, you can also implement PWM using software. Why do you do this? Well, maybe hardware PWM doesn't exist, or maybe you ran out of pins, or maybe it has an insufficient range of frequency. Hardware control is preferred because it works independently. It's not going through the operating system waiting to take its turn to work in the microprocessor. It is completely independent, and it is often perfectly repeatable. This is important for a very high precision task. Let's say, for example, the controller of a 3D printer. You want to make sure that head goes exactly where you want it every single time. Software PWM is nowhere near as precise as hardware PWM, but it's often not important because the associated PID controller will maintain the level for you. Again, Let's look at the dishwasher temperature. Is it really that important that we keep the dishwasher temperature to the 100th of a degree? No. Well, the errors due to the software timing will eventually cancel out. So let's make a PWM module as one of our homework examples. So make a new class called PWM Stuff. We're going to avoid parallel processing or multi-threading. It's going to be really simple. And the frequency and the duty cycle need to be adjustable, obviously. The frequency, let's just fix it for the duration of the program's run. We're going to say, oh yeah, the dishwasher needs a frequency of no more than half a hertz, and we're going to leave it at half a hertz for the, as long as we run the dishwasher. The duty cycle, of course, has to be continuously adjustable because the PID controller is going to ask for different power levels as the temperature goes up or down or whatever. You can't guarantee when the method gets called because the dispatcher, the operating system, that's going to take care of when each method gets called. So you're going to compare the time that's on with the time that the cycle started. You're not going to sit there and wait because if you did, then nothing else could happen in your software. Each time that your PWM 
class gets called, you're going to compare the time with the time that the cycle, the current cycle started, and you're going to change it to off when the on time is complete. Again, I invite you to read the details here because there's a little bit more to it. There's got to have some kind of an error, plus or minus X, because your software timer isn't going to be perfect either. And then you're going to want to repeat this over and over again. Eventually, the errors will cancel out, I guarantee you. The PWM class is in the shared folder. The associated controller, your PID controller, would simply call the get output method as often as possible or as often as necessary. And the method could do something like this. Take advantage of the performance timer that we created many, many classes ago. Use the percent operator that we talked about. This is the thing that gives you a, a remainder. Remember, there's a way to get the remainder of a division and use an inline if statement that we talked about several sessions ago to set the output level. So here on the screen you can see a perfectly useful get output method that encompasses all of these things. As, as you notice, it's only a few lines here in Python, which is another reason why we like Python so much. It's easy to read, it's easy to write, and a method is often just a few lines. Okay, hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you again in part number 24 when we talk about more event-driven software.